Ten Hag looked broken after the 3 0 defeat to Bournemouth yesterday, and he made a few interesting comments post match, which are kind of things he doesn't really normally say about his players post match. And I think it's very obvious watching United, they need a centre back, they need a striker, they need something in attack, they need something in defence. Because the team is not good, it's not working. They obviously massively missed Lissandra Martinez, but there are still a few key tactical issues which the Bournemouth manager himself exploited. So in today's video, we're going to get into the post-match comments, some of the news post-match, and then talk about five things, five things we learned from the Bournemouth defeat. 3-0, it <coughs> still hurts. Smash a like, smash the subscribe. Let's get into this one. So Tenorg said after the match, as a squad, we're not good enough to be consistent in this league if you are not playing on the, on the highest level you get killed I'm annoyed disappointed and definitely um and I expected something different yesterday and that's what Ten Hag said and he's spot on we are not good enough to be consistent but this is like a big U-turn for Ten Hag because he's always saying oh it's my fault the players are good he's always praising the players and I see people saying oh make your mind up Ten Hag one minute you're praising the players the next minute they're not good enough to be consistent they're not good enough to be consistent. Ten Hag speaking facts, but he's trying to protect his players. He's trying to stick up for his players because he doesn't want any other people doing a bloody Jaden Sancho statement and saying, oh, can't believe Ten Hag said this about me. The Man United players are not good enough. <coughs> and that is a fact to be consistent because sometimes we play well, sometimes we play poor, but they're not able to execute his tactics to the highest standard each time because we don't have players with the technical ability. We don't have players with the athleticism. We've got players injured. He's not wrong. He's obviously protected his players a lot after matches this season and said that it was his fault or you can't blame this player. And Martial got a lot of stick and he's saying you can't just blame Martial as a team you weren't good enough. Um, and he'll say that my players are great. I'm happy with my players. But for a change, he's saying, you know what, we're not good enough to be consistent. Instead of saying my players are great, I'm happy with my players, he's actually said, you know what, we're not good enough to be consistent. And I see that as Ten Hag sort of on the edge now. He's broken. He's on the edge. He's fed up. He wants January investment. He wants another attacker. He wants a centre-back. He needs January investment. And that's what I read that as well. Um, he also made a few other interesting post-match comments. He said, you have to beat your best every day, start with focus, starting with focus, which is something we don't have. We gave the ball away twice, which resulted in two of the goals. When you start like we did, you get killed. They're good opponents, but we have to do better. He said, you need consistency. We can play a very good game against many opponents. We are able to do it, but if you have to do it every third day, um, it's, that's not good enough. He said, get it right, and uh, the demands are of a certain standard. We have to go higher standards to deliver in every third day. And he's spot on. He's saying, look, sometimes we get matches right, sometimes we don't, but we've got to have this standard consistency of getting it right every day. And he said, I expected something different. I thought we could build on the Chelsea result and the way we start was no good. To be honest, I'm not too concerned about the way we started. I'm concerned about the way we ended. I think that we were very good in the first half. I think that while we did concede chances, we had the opportunity to definitely go in at halftime 1-1 um, and we were 1-0 down at in the first half and I thought oh, that's annoying because I don't think we've been too bad it was the second half we started okay and as soon as it went to 2-0 that's when we just became the Man United side that we know just gives up and is just consistently dreadful at 2-0 but the big problem was highlighted by the Bournemouth manager he said this they send a lot of players forward so you'll get spaces in this kind of open game when you know there will be chances for both games we spoke at half time and needing more goals if we want to win that's what he said he said at half time he said to his players, we need more goals if we want to win. So they didn't sit back, they didn't park the bus, but they knew this was an open game, so they knew they were going to get chances. He said, when you send so many threats, it's a matter of numbers. You have situations to make the attack 2v2, 3v2, 3v3. And we were good in these moments. We knew we could make our wingers run backwards, but we knew when we recovered high, our forwards would have space. We knew in transition, we, had, we would have our chances and we took them. They basically said, we knew that Man United were going to commit a lot of men forward. There was going to be a lot of space left in the midfield. And if they won the ball back in transition, it was going to be quite easy for them to play through. <clears throat> they had a lot of 2v2s, 3v3s, 3v2s, and, and that's how they won the game. Every time we gave the ball away, because of the positioning and the structural positioning of this side, it made it so easy for Bournemouth to just play through as transitions for us. And the Bournemouth manager saying that, he's essentially saying, look, Man United loves loads of space in behind because they commit a lot of people forward. We've seen Man United this season. We knew we were going to get them in transition. They didn't have to part the bat and hold back. They thought, you know what, we'll let United have possession. We'll hit them in transition. And, and that's exactly what Bournemouth did, which brings me into the five things we learned from the match. Starting with the first thing, Ten Hag's got to change the structure. I mean, look at this here. You can see clearly... <coughs> the structure uh, is not working. 
um, particularly McTominay, which we're going to talk about in the third point, but that's our passing lanes versus Chelsea and our passing lanes versus Bournemouth. And in the Chelsea game, we're way more compact. You can see that Garnacho, Bruno and Shaw are linking up really well. We're way, way more compact in that Chelsea game. Everyone's close together. McTominay's a lot closer to the rest of the team as well. And it's just sort of Hoyland on his own there doing the press from the front. If you look at the passing lanes from minute one to 60 versus Bournemouth, we can see that we're a lot, lot further apart. You can see that McTominay has kind of got all the space. You can see the amount of space left in the midfield. Look at Chelsea. We've got exploited a little bit versus Chelsea, but you can see that there's a lot less space left in the midfield and the players were a lot more compact and closer to each other, which made it easier for us in possession to do those quick one-two passes. It meant we gave the ball away less. We could keep possession better versus Bournemouth. Unless we were going out to the left-hand side, um, and playing up the left-hand side, it was basically like we had to go long a lot to do the passes. Look how far apart McTominay is from the rest of the squad, number 39. Look how much space is left in that midfield area. We've got like a really compactness on the left-hand side versus Bournemouth. And then we've sort of got McTominay on his own. And then we've got number five, number 20 and number 21, which is Anthony Delo and Maguire sort of linking up. But that space in behind, every time we gave the ball away, made it so easy for Bournemouth to hit us on the transitions and Ten Hag's got to change the structure. He's got to do what he did versus Copenhagen, which is instead of having McTominay as this this guy that free roams uh, on the edge of the box, number eight, number ten, bring him back or bring back whoever's in McTominay's position because it's not just McTominay; it's, it's his positional sense, and play a bit of a pivot. Our best bet is playing a pivot, not with a DM and two eights, because Amrabat is great, Mano is great, Casemiro is great, but they've been asked to do so much; it's almost impossible for them. <coughs> we need to revert back to what worked versus Copenhagen. This links to my second point. Maguire and Amrabat had way too much to do. I saw Amrabat get stick, I saw Maguire get stick, but they were our two best players. Amrabat has to patrol such a large zone. He made so many crucial tackles, interceptions, won the ball back, was really good in possession, really good at progressing the ball. But yes, they ran through us multiple times, but that's not Amrabat's fault because he's not two people. He's one person and he should have had more support from McTominay. Harry Maguire had to make so many tackles, so many blocks, so many clearances. And yes, you can see the three goals, but Maguire wasn't at fault for any of those three goals. Maguire made so many tackles, blocks, clearances, because Bournemouth had about four or five, two, three V2s or two V2s, obviously they didn't score from, that Maguire was a big part in defending. But you look at it and you think, well, Man United have conceded, I think, the third most shots in their last six or seven games. Maguire's having to put in all these tackles. Amrabat's having to put in all these tackles and blocks. You could criticise Maguire and Amrabat if you wanted, because we've conceded three goals. But actually, you're looking at how much they had to do and why did they have to do so much? Because of the structural setup. Because they basically, it's so easy for teams to run and transition for us. It was so easy for Bournemouth. The poor old Amrabat was there having to do everything. And then if he couldn't do it, Maguire had to do it because he got no support Amrabat. And the midfield is the biggest problem because they can run for our midfield in transition because Amrabat has no support. The setup is poor. And that is completely on Eric Ten Hag. <laughs> The third thing we learned is McTominay. Now, in terms of positional sense, I don't think it's M M McTominay's fault that he he has no help and he doesn't help out Amrabat. I think that's what Ten Hag tells him to do. But McTominay ha offers no balance outside of goals. McTominay is great at crashing the box, getting the goals in, but he doesn't help him build up. He doesn't help with retention. He doesn't help him possession. He doesn't get back. He doesn't get on the ball enough. He'll have way less touches than anyone else. Our style of play is worse when McTominay plays. The, the football we play is worse when McTominay plays because it's like having 10 men. With McTominay, he'll either be brilliant and score three goals and be fantastic in this goal for all game, or he's going to completely ghost. And it's, it's like Fellaini. He's a 4 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, but he's 4 out of 10 more times than he's a 10 out of 10. He's not involved in the game. He can't get involved. If you're creating loads and loads of chances, McTominay's great. If you're looking for a winner and you want to bring on a super sub, well, Tom and is great, but in terms of a full game, a full 90, controlling the game, sustaining the game, you can't go with Tom and you need an Amrabat main a pivot because that gets you more control, which means the defence gets more protection, which means we keep more of the ball better, which means we're less vulnerable in transition, but also because we've got more control, we'll naturally create more chances. Which brings me into the fourth point. We need more quality in attack. We are not creating enough chances. Tomine being our top scorer is scary. The decision-making from our attackers is poor. Where is the service to Hoyland? We need to take our chances better. We should have taken them better versus Chelsea. But our attack isn't good enough. We need someone in January. We need a defender. We need a attacker in January. Our attack isn't good enough. I love Rasmus Hoyland. I think he's brilliant. But Ten Hag never wanted him to be the main striker. Ten Hag always wanted Hoyland and a support striker, another player. And the fifth and final thing we learned is just play Varane. Luke Shaw is, is a left back. Varane and Maguire are still better than Lindelof and Varane. We never should have signed Johnny Evans. Varane is a box defender. Today he could have prevented two goals. He's top quality. 
I'm fed up of Ram being on the bench because of Ten Hag's stubbornness. Look, I'm Ten Hag in. I want him to do well. But Mayno and Amra back in the pivot, please. Varan off the bench, please. Bish, bash, boss. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. See you next time. Bye.